So I've just been on my weekly shop and I've noticed that the cost of my groceries has been steadily going up for quite a while now. There's a few different factors for this, mainly supply chain disruptions emanating from things like the pandemic, climate change, wars in Ukraine and the Middle East, and of course new trading rules since Brexit. Now, you may think that Brexit is yesterday's news, but you're wrong because there are new import rules coming in this year. Yes, that's right, 2024. So let's have a look at what these new rules are and how they're going to impact my weekly shopping. So yes, the UK left the EU in 2020 and Brussels introduced controls on British goods entering the continent at the start of 21 following the end of the transition period. The UK opted to introduce its own import controls in phases and this was done to support UK businesses as they were grappling with the impacts of the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Many of the remaining import rules are set to be introduced this year through the border target operating model, including a range of sanitary and phytosanitary checks on agri-food products. The rules being brought in vary according to the level of risk associated with each good. This level of risk is being determined by a number of factors, including the possibility that certain types of plants or animal-based products could inadvertently bring various diseases into the country if left unchecked. The new rules include new documentary requirements at the end of January and physical inspections from the end of April for higher risk goods. So let's have a look at my weekly shop, starting with that trusty tuber, the potato. And the UK imports a lot of these from France, the Netherlands and Ireland. Now the potato, under the border target operating model, is classed as a high risk plant product. That means that a phytosanitary certificate will need to be obtained by the EU supplier by an approved plant health authority in that country. And the certificate will need to be obtained for each pallet of potatoes that is being exported to Britain. The EU supplier or their customs agent will also need to submit a pre-notification of their export 24 hours before it is due to be shipped out of the export country via the EU's traces system. The UK importer will also need to submit a pre-notification in Britain via our own IPAF system. Again, that's 24 hours before the shipment is due to happen. There are also likely to be physical and identity checks on these potatoes from April. The importer will incur additional costs in obtaining the phytosanitary certificate, while the customs agent in both the EU and the UK may add additional costs for supporting the businesses to submit the pre-notifications on traces and IPAFs. Additional checks in April will inevitably add some extra time to various shipments. So all in all, there's going to be new rules and processes for European potatoes entering Britain and there could be costs associated with this and this cost could be passed down to the consumer. The good news is that not all products are affected equally. Let's take another example on the plant side. So let's look at this orchid. An orchid is a high risk product, so that is going to be impacted by new rules. But these roses are low risk, so there will be no additional checks for them. The important thing to remember is that these categories can also change. So take blueberries and avocados. These were low risk goods and would have had no additional documentary requirements needed for them. However, this changed to medium risk in the week leading up to the 31st of January deadline. The main thing to think about is the category of your good because that will determine what checks may be needed. Now, let's talk meat. So, I may be a vegetarian, but I know that Brits love their European meat. And the way that products of animal origin are affected by the border target operating model in part depends on how they are stored. For instance, cured meats and sausages that can be stored at ambient temperatures are classed as low risk, so these goods won't be too badly affected. Minced meat that is chilled or frozen is an example of a medium risk good, for which there will be new rules. The same applies for eggs for human consumption, certain types of wild caught fish like tuna and herring, and cheese and butter that's made from raw milk. 
So for the European minced meat or the eggs or cheese in this instance, there will be new documentary requirements. This includes the need for the EU supplier to obtain a export health certificate signed by an official veterinarian in Europe. As well as this, the EU supplier's customs agent will need to lodge the pre-notification on traces 24 hours before the goods are due to move. The UK importer's customs agent will need to do similarly on IPAFs. There will be costs to this, whether that's the export health certificate or the additional tasks for the intermediaries. So again, these could be passed down to consumers. A report in the FT last year found that some of the costs associated with the border target operating model could be valued up to an additional £330 million a year for businesses. This includes the physical border checks coming in in April, which could be around £43 per check. All there's the cost of getting the expert health certificates, uh, which are coming in in January, which could be anything from tens to hundreds of pounds or euros. Larger supermarkets and retailers, which can import certain commodities in bulk, will be better able to absorb these new requirements and manage the cost impact on their customers. However, smaller retailers importing goods from independent European suppliers, i.e. your local Polish Sklep or your favourite French deli, they could be more significantly hit. These businesses are less able to move goods in bulk and will often need to group the various goods they import within a single consignment which the trade industry calls groupage. It's quite possible that any truck carrying a group of different products with different risk categories could need to be stopped for an inspection if it includes any higher risk goods. So it's not just food for human consumption that is affected by the border target operating model. For instance, my cat Tofu really likes to get his pet food from Europe. So what do we need to know? Processed or canned pet foods are low risk, so will not be affected too much. But frozen or raw meats for pets are medium risk, so export health certificates and physical checks may come into play. So how the UK trades with the EU and the rest of the world is set to change again in 2024. Indeed, the border target operating model is just one of over 20 changes that is due to take place over the next year or so. To read about these changes, download our white paper, BTOM and Beyond, from the website at export.org.uk. If you think the goods you supply or import into Britain will be affected by the border target operating model, make sure to download the BTOM and Beyond white paper, check out our training course on sanitary and phytosanitary rules, or join the Institute as a member to watch our library of lunchtime learning webinars, access our technical helpline, and get bespoke and exclusive guidance on how to manage the new rules and processes.